Hello everyone, my name is Kirill and you are on the Auto Advisor channel. Today we'll talk about the ABS sensor. I think you have all heard that there is such an ABS system. It stands for Anti-Lock Braking System and based on its name it's clear that it prevents something from blocking. In fact, it prevents the wheel from blocking. So essentially, it prevents the wheel from stopping. Such a phenomenon. I repeat once again. There is such an ABS system. It is used when we brake and it prevents the wheel from stopping. Since it prevents the wheel from stopping, how should we stop the car? Let me explain to you how the ABS system works. So, we are driving. The wheel is spinning, and let's say we rapidly press the brake pedal. At this moment, the brake pads are pressing against the brake disc. Well, something like I'm showing with my hand. The wheel starts to slow down, and when it has almost completely stopped, the ABS system abruptly releases the pads. The wheel then rotates. Then the ABS system compresses them again and the wheel almost completely stops. ABS system makes this on and off and this is how our car slows down. And experienced drivers know that when you press the brake pedal you hear such a twitch. This is exactly how the ABS system works. Now a few words about the physics. It turns out that on flat surfaces, braking of this kind, when the wheel is stopped or blocked, is worse than when the car is slowed down until the moment of blocking, which means there is no longer a breakdown point. Why is this happening? When we brake in a locked state, as it is now, the wheel seems to fly over the surface, although, of course, at zero height. But when the wheel brakes and grip is maintained, then the tire clings to the surface and the coefficient of adhesion is greater. The car brakes better when the wheel grips the surface. That is, grip is maintained. Once again, on hard flat surfaces, effect of braking is when the wheel stops like this. And inefficient braking is when we block the wheel, then the braking distance will be longer. Yes, indeed. Now many will say that there are surfaces where ABS is ineffective. Yes, there really are surfaces, like sand, for example. These are not hard surfaces, where it is more efficient to break when the wheel stops completely immediately and then it starts to dig into the sand, for example. Also, the system is not always effective, for example, on snow, which is also loose. By the way, for the first time the ABS system was used by aviation in order to effectively stop aircraft during landing. And so let's put it all in one sentence. There is an ABS system. It increases the control over the car when braking and allows you to shorten the braking distance on hard surfaces. So its main idea is to prevent the wheel from blocking, so that the wheel does not completely stop. In order to monitor this parameter, I mean the speed of rotation of the wheel, we need a special sensor that will measure the speed of rotation of the wheels. This sensor is usually called an ABS sensor or a wheel rotation sensor. It should be noted that in modern cars, the signal from the ABS sensor is used not only in the ABS system itself, but also in other security systems, for example, in the stability control system. The computer analyzes the rotation of all four wheels and sees if the car is, for example, in a skid. And then they already use special algorithms so that the car successfully exits it. Also, these data are used, for example, in all-wheel drive. So the ABS sensor is a very important device for a modern car and all security systems that are associated with braking, acceleration, directional stability and even all-wheel drive require it. And so, little by little, we move on to the ABS sensor itself. Here is one sensor, here is the second sensor and here is the third. All of them serve to measure the speed of rotation of the wheels. There are several types of ABS sensor on the market today. They are divided into two groups active and passive sensors. Based on the name, 
Passive sensors are those sensors that independently generate a signal and this sensor does not need power. And active sensors are those sensors that require a power supply. Historically, passive sensors were developed first. Here is an example of such a sensor. Its distinguishing feature is this presence of such a cylindrical massive tip. In fact, it is the sensor itself, which is located inside this metal cylinder. The rest is just some fastening elements and the wire that goes further to the ABS control module. There is a permanent magnet inside this sensor, and a winding is wound around this magnet. I can prove that there is a magnet inside with this pin. You can see that the magnet is pulling the pin in. So the magnet creates a magnetic field. The magnetic field also flows through the coil. And if we move some conductive object at a short distance from the sensor, for example, we rotate this reluctor ring that has these spikes and spaces between them. So when the ring rotates, an electric current appears in the coil, which is a signal that the ABS system can read further. Well, from the school physics course, you should know that an electric current and a magnetic field affect each other. So if something moves in the system, then an electric current usually occurs. The same thing is with the ABS sensor. There is a magnet inside, around which we move the electrical conductor, and then inside there is an electric current appears on the coil, which is a signal. I remind you that this is a so-called passive sensor. No power is supplied to the sensor. It generates a signal by itself, and this is actually its big disadvantage, since the signal it generates is very weak and not very resistant to external interference, or some kind of violation of geometry, for example, this gap. The second problem is that this sensor does not start working from zero speed. By the way, this is called the ABS ring. I already showed you. These are depressions and teeth here. They alternate like this, and this ring rotates with the wheel. And the ABS sensor, this one, is on this side. This is how they work. There is a small gap, and due to the fact that either a tooth or a cavity alternates, this is where the signal occurs. The sensitivity of this sensor starts at about 20 km per hour, and until that, the sensor does not send the desired signal. Reluctor ring can look a little different. The same shaped teeth can be located in another plane, like I also have this reluctor ring on the table, where the T's are in front, then the sensor works like this. The sensor would continue to be used on cars, but as I said, many security systems were invented that required a more accurate signal, so more modern accurate sensors are placed this large so-called induction sensor. They are called active. They also come in two subtypes. One of them is called a whole sensor, here it is, such a small size ABS sensor. And the second is called a magneto-resistive sensor, something like that. In addition to that active sensors began to send more accurate signals, they also decreased in size. Here is the whole sensor and his size, and here is the old passive sensor. As for the principle of operation of the whole sensor or this magneto-resistive sensor, finally spoke it out. It's the same. Everything again revolves around the magnets and an electric field. As for the principle of operation of the new sensors, now they read the signal a little differently. If earlier our ABS ring was so jacked, now the ABS ring is flat and we don't see anything here. But in fact, there are small magnets – North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole – and there are 40 such magnets. Really? Magnets? I can prove it again with a pin. Here I have a pin, and it is successfully attracted to this ring. So now this ring is rotating along with the wheel. The sensor is installed in front, and this sensor now reacts to a pole change 
That is, when the ring rotates, the sensor understands that the poles are changing here, so a signal of a certain frequency is transmitted to the ABS system, and the ABS system already calculates the wheel speed. It should be noted that there are not always such rings. Now the developers thought that they would install this magnetic alternating ring directly on the bearing, on the hub bearing. Here I have such a wheel bearing. It comes with such instruction. It's written in red in English. Guys, carefully install the ring with the right side, because there is an ABS magnetic sensor. Here is this black ABS sensor. There is no ring on the back of this bearing. How can I check? Well, just again, there is a pin. On one hand, there is no attraction. But on this side, there is a such small extension, and the pin is attracted by the magnet. The principle of operation is very simple. The bearing rotates with the wheel. This black ring rotates, on which there are magnets of alternating sign. ABS sensors are usually installed here on the side and it reads the movement of these magnets invisible to us, as signals appears in this sensor, which is successfully transmitted to the ABS system. The whole sensor works pretty much the same way, I mean on the same principles. There is also a magnetic field there, there is a conductor, the magnets rotate here and again, due to the fact that either the magnetic field or the conductor rotate, an electric current arises inside, if to put it simply. But the magnetoresistive sensor already works a little on different principles. It is thin, it reads the signal with this surface. That is, if it were like this, then it would probably work like this. Inside the sensor, there are several layers of special materials, the conductivity of which depends on the direction of the magnetic field. These are ferromagnetic special materials. Well, that's pretty much how it works. So this is all I wanted to say about the design and purpose of ABS sensors. The ABS sensor is designed to measure the speed of rotation of our wheels. This information is used not only by the ABS system, but also by other systems, such as the stability control system, the all-wheel drive system, and so on. We have discussed two types of sensors with you. Here are the old inductive sensors and modern active sensors. Here is the whole sensor and the second one, magnetoresistive sensor. This part is called an ABS reluctor ring, and this is called a wheel hub bearing. And by the way, if you need any of these parts for any brand of car, be sure to visit our website outaustrov.by. The link will be in the description. Now a few words about operation. The ABS sensor is a device that supposedly should not break down and the manufacturer expects that it will work for the entire life of the car. But if we have higher car mileage, these sensors eventually fail. The main reason for the breakdown is the breakage of these connectors or the loss of the signal, that is, for some mechanical reasons or corrosion reasons. Sometimes, when dissembling, replacing brake pads, someone accidentally blurts out these sensors with a hammer or wrench. Something sometimes breaks off. Sometimes this plug can break and the sensor thus stops giving a signal. In this case, an ABS error will appear on your dashboard, and when you have already connected the computer, it will say which sensor does not work on which side of which wheel. Usually the sensors are not repairable. Of course, some people can repair something in the garage, but I advise you to buy a new part. Well, now an interesting question. Since the anti-lock braking system prevents the wheel from stopping, as I said, so how the car actually stops? because the system prevents the wheel from completely stopping. And I mean, when the ABS sensor shows that the wheel is stopped, the system opens the pads. And how in this way can we stop to zero? Write your answers in the comments. So, this is all I wanted to say about the ABS sensor and all these devices. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. All the best to you and see you soon.